Hi friends, in this video we are going to see how to promote a virtual machine with a Windows Server operating system into a domain controller. Let us open the Oracle VM virtual box and open your virtual machine. So in this what we need to do is first we need to create a domain then set an IP address to this server system and configure this system as the domain controller. Once we set this system as the domain controller, it can then control and manage all other servers that are connected to this domain. So for that, what we are going to do is, in the server manager, click on add roles and features. In this, click next. Okay, now here let us go with the default and go next. So here you are, are they are asking us to uh, select the uh, select the particular uh, which one the um, server that we are going to make it a domain a domain controller. So we have only one and so select this one and click next. Now here what, what do we need? We need the Active Directory Domain Services. That is the most important thing. Active Directory Domain Services. Click that and add features and then go next. In the next pop-up we need to install the .NET Framework 3.5 features. Click that and click next. Now here it is default go click next okay so here comes another important step so here they are asking us to install now the next step is actually to install uh, this roles and features that we have selected that is a .NET framework and uh, this uh, ADDS that is the active directory domain services we are going to install it but before that what we need to check is see this do you need to specify an alternate source path? One or more installation selections are missing the source files. So this usually deals with this .NET Framework 3.5 features. Sometimes it works fine when we go with the install. But sometimes these files may be missing in our download. So what we do need to do is we need to specify an alternate source path. And let us see how to do that. For that go click specify an alternate source path so here we need to give the source path of where the dotnet framework that file that particular file is there in our downloaded um, this OS okay okay so first of all we need to find the path so here they are saying it is e sources s bar s folder so we need to find where the sources s bar s folder is in our virtual machine the only problem is that this drive may, name may change so in order to find the correct source path of our system what we need to do is go to this file explorer okay and click computer so our virtual path name is d hmm? And in order to find this file, what we need to do is go to Devices, Optical Drives and select our operating system file to this disk. Choose the disk file and our operating system is this one. Okay, so we are going to open that. Now once we open that, will get tap to choose what happens with the disk so open it open the folder now here we will see the folder sources and inside the sources we will see the s bar s and inside this you will have the framework for the dotnet dotnet framework 3.5 will be inside this so what we need is we need this path d sources s bar s so copy that path copy and paste it here paste and click okay, let us give the path since it is inside that folder we need to give one more black slash and click next okay okay 
so now we have specified an alternate path source path so that it will surely get the dotnet framework features okay now it's done and we will give install now this will start adding the roles and the features that are required for a domain controller now this is going to take some time okay and once these features are installed we need to promote the server as a domain controller once we finish this installation process we'll do that so let us wait it will take some time okay now the feature installation is completed this installation succeeded now we need to configure so here it is promote the server to a domain controller left click that okay now another pop-up window will come so since we are going to create a new domain we already don't have a domain we are going to create one so here click add a new forest and now we are going to give a name to our domain you can give whatever name you like so I'm going to give my first domain dot com so dot com that is necessary my first domain dot com so I have given a name and I'm going to click next okay so these are all uh, let us keep all the defaults and here we need to give the password so select a password okay this is still being done uh, installation let us wait okay it's done so here now we need to give a password select any password that you need I'm giving my password and click next okay so this is the name my first domain and click next Okay, this is the location of the radius file go go with the uh, defaults click next and next so here they are verifying the prerequisites and if there are any problem with the installation that we have done so far that the steps that we have done so far it will be mentioned here okay now it is done and the system is rebooting okay so you can see that the name of the system has been changed to my first domain backslash administrator so now this system has become a part of our domain named my first domain so any other server that joins this particular domain will be now controlled or managed by this particular system so in order to complete the entire steps what we need to do now is we have to assign an IP address for this domain controller and then configure some of the settings for the domain controller okay so we'll do that okay so now we are going to do the configuration of the IP address for a virtual machine for that go to this icon and right click open network and sharing center change adapter settings 
right click and go to its properties in the properties select the ipv4 version and go to its properties so here we are going to set the ip address for this virtual machine so um, here you can see that you can get IP settings either automatically or you need to ask your network administrator for the appropriate IP setting. So how to get the appropriate IP setting? For that we are going to look up the IP address and the default gateway of our host system. How to do that? Go to your host system, type in command prompt and in the command prompt type IP config enter and you will get the details of the internet connection for our host system so this is my internet adapter sorry my wireless LAN adapter and this is the IPv4 address 192.168.1.104 and the default gateway is 192.168.1.1 So based on this with the help of this IP addresses I am going to set the IP address for our virtual machine So going back to the virtual machine So click on use the following IP address and here I am going to give the same credentials name uh, numbers uh, as that of my host machine till the first three units okay so the first three digits are 192.168.1 sorry one point and the last number here you're going to give another number so for my host system it is 104 so give any number out of uh, maybe uh, around uh, uh, 10 or 20 uh, systems may be connected mostly maximum up to 50 systems may be connected so we will select a number out of that range okay so 104 and we will go to some okay we will give some 150 hmm? and click on subnet mask and it will automatically come now we have to give the default gateway so the default gateway must be the same as that of my host system the default gateway of my host system is this 192.168.1.1 so maybe in your system this may be different check your systems default gateway and you have to input the same gateway number to your virtual machine so I'm going to give 192.168.1.1 okay and now we have to mention an alternate dns server the preferred dns they are mentioning it as 127.0.0.1 that is fine and we are going to mention the alternate dns server so i am going to give the same ip address that is alternately you have to point to the same machine okay so give 192.168.1.150 sorry 1.150 yeah and click ok yeah so now the settings are done and I have got the internet access with the uh, required an IP address that we have configured just now so now we have upgraded this windows uh, virtual machine to a domain controller and did the required configuration of the ip addresses thank you for watching the video please do subscribe to our channel thank you